London. Hello, it's December the 28th. My video is all about recovery, living in recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, for many years. My behaviour equally addictive towards people, places and things. People trying to be right with them, trying to love them and becoming a very trying person. And as for places, getting stuck in a rut around work, living certain places and things, collecting, so quite obsessive, always looking for the next right thing and it's coming up to the sale time or in fact it's already started, Boxing Day sales, January sales, I was quite a good candidate in the olden days of drinking for making purchases of things I would never use, so these days I don't, simply a day at a time. I try to make life work and be in balance around people, places and things. So what's it like to be in recovery from drink and what's it like to be in recovery from extremes of behaviour or feeling the extremes of behaviour and feeling nothing in between? Well actually these days my feelings tend to fit the experience I'm having whether I'm happy or sad, angry or res resentful, my feelings match my experience. So life still throws at me all those things which can make me angry and resentful or happy to an extreme which then required a drink to take the edge off, to make it right, to celebrate or just to be sad, angry and lonely. So drink did have its purpose in my life until it took over and I don't know when it took over. I don't know when I became an addictive personality. Uh, I don't know what to call myself these days other than I am Don in recovery one day at a time and I'll know a little bit more about who I am by the time I get to tonight and I will, will remember it because I'm sober or I will forget it because it's not important. What a difference and you know what helped me most to get to where I am today, that's an, a well-worn phrase in a comedy show, I didn't get where I am today by being a drunk well actually I did and then I found sobriety at the end of it. I got to a place of rock bottom where nothing seemed to work anymore and life wasn't worth living and it's called the jumping off point. Either we jump into uh, a suicidal drinking bout or we find some way, other way to expire quickly because life is just too awful to live or as in my case I've got a moment of clarity which said if you can't do it on your own, and I could not do it on my own, I need help. And family, professionals, community, all kept me alive long enough in some way or other. And I owe a great debt of gratitude to my sister around this. Being alive long enough to get that moment of clarity which was, I cannot live and do this on my own. So out of isolation into some sort of inclusion and then I found the fellowship of AA or the fellowship of AA found me because my sister rang up and said what can I do to help my brother and they said pretty much nothing other than try and keep him alive and she did in a very helpful way so there you go uh, the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous I never speak for it cannot will not it's full of unique authentic people who will share their experience, strength and hope where they will. And I share experience, strength and hope here about my recovery but I can't share it about anybody else's other than in a general way. And that's what the fellowship is all about. Anonymity to find the truth of who we are and how to keep sober one day at a time. And anonymity is sacrosanct. It's the same as if you went to a doctor or a professional about your stuff your feelings and why they're out of, out of proportion and don't fit reality. And then once we get to reality, how do we stay sober? Well, the Fellowship of AA is where I learned about the 12 step action program, the 12 steps of AA, which are principles and suggestions to help me make life work one day at a time or simply live life and it works. So I share the preamble which is shared at every meeting of AA here, something from the daily reflections and maybe something other, some other part of literature in the program and uh, how am I feeling today. So today I'm feeling okay, I've spent two or three days in the company of lots of people, 
So uh, my head is a bit fried when it comes to how am I today? It's telling me, take rest, be careful, be gentle. And I also uh, went a bit too far physically in terms of um, walking and being present in, in the company of others. And if you have uh, another malady or disease, I have type 1 diabetes, there are complications with, which are physical, which means that I am limited in what I can do. So I need to take account of those and keep as well as I can. Anyway, the AA preamble, which is the starting point for me, I don't recite it, I share it and read it. Then I slow myself down into being present to make this video as best that I can. AA. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. So the fellowship is not part of anything but about sobriety. But as far as sects, denomination, politics, organisations or institutions, pretty much everybody has their affiliations outside the fellowship. Uh, we just don't share them in a way which means we want you to join in with what another person does. Another person's life is their life. So we may hear about everything, but we are there for one purpose, and that's to be sober. And it goes on to say, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes, which is why I'm separate. These videos are about what works for me, and it's not about me telling you that AA is going to work for you. I can never do that, because it may not. AA can't fix a thing. It just provides a fellowship of people who share wisdom and see what happens with a program, steps and traditions to help us make a framework with where life can work. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. That's it, the primary purpose. And around that, anonymity provides the cloak to find the truth of who we are so that we can be truthful in our daily living, open, honest and willing to live life as it is, reality, without taking the edge off, without taking a drink, or obsessing about people, places and things. And it's very easy to get stuck in the malady or go backwards, which is why I do these videos daily, and it's why AA is open in, with meetings always daily, because it's always just for today. Daily Reflections, this book so useful to me because it covers the 12 steps and 12 traditions over a year 365 readings 365 bites of the cherry and it says for December 28th where it reads suit up and show up in AA we aim not only for sobriety we try again to become citizens of the world that we rejected and of, and of the world that once rejected us this is the ultimate demonstration towards which the 12th step work it's the first but not the final step because once we've got to step 12 in the program we are wanting to share it we've been sharing it all the time since step 1 but all 12 steps are principles and suggestions which make life work or make life livable the old line says suit up and show up that action is so important that I like to think of it as my motto and sometimes it's uh, said as suit up or boot up, boot up and suit up or suit up and show up, boot up and show up whatever, but suit up and show up I can choose each day to suit up and show up or not showing up at meetings starts me toward feeling a part of that meeting for then I can do what I say I'll do at meetings I can talk with newcomers and I can share my experience that's what credibility, honesty and courtesy really are Suiting up and showing up are the concrete actions I take in my ongoing return to normal living. And, uh, you know, when we've become isolated, shut down, stuck in the malady, fixing ourselves on a moment-by-moment -moment basis with whatever it is, or I might be doing it with coffee right now. 
we are in recovery able to share a me message of experience, strength and hope and it's not just in the meetings of AA it's if a natural opportunity occurs where somebody needs help we, well, I always ask them are you in need of help and talk to them with courtesy and always remind myself that I am equal to everyone else and everyone else is equal to me and that the message I have may not be appropriate for quite a lot of people because it's too clear sometimes or I'm, I'm just not the right person I'm a man, it might be a woman who is in distress and as a man I want to help them and then things get complicated so we tend to stick to where is safe ground where we can operate as truly open, honest and credible people and trustworthy so there are no other motives so the fellowship is full of unique authentic people all with a different way of explaining their message and that's so important as well because we won't connect with everybody some, pa some people because of our self prejudice and the prejudice we develop some people we just don't want to know and we will not like them or until we know understand and understand how to like ourselves enough to accept people as they are and even then we might not like them so we find like with like and then we work it out there is a, a card called just for today this one <coughs> and uh, many of us carry one in, in our pockets because it's just a reminder a, ge a gentle reminder of what life can be if we have the right attitude and approach to it and this is what it says just for today I will try to live through this day only and not tackle my whole life problem at once I can do something for 12 hours that would appall me if I felt that I had to keep it up for a lifetime just for today I will be happy most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be just for today I will adjust myself to what is and not try to adjust everything to my own desires I will take my luck as it comes and, I, and fit myself to it just for today I will try to strengthen my mind I will study I will learn something useful I will not be a mental loafer I will read something that requires effort thought and concentration just for today I will exercise my soul in three ways I will do somebody a good turn and not get found out if anybody finds if anybody knows of it it will not count I will do at least two things I don't want to do just for exercise I will not show anyone that my feelings are hurt they may be hurt but today I will not show it just for today I will be agreeable I will look as well as I can dress becomingly talk low act courteously criticize not one bit not find fault with anything and not try to improve or regulate anybody except myself just for today I will have a program I may not follow it exactly but I will have it I will save myself from two pests hurry and indecision just for today I will have a quiet uh, half hour all, to my, all by myself and relax during this half hour sometime I will try to get a better perspective of my life just for today I will be unafraid especially I will not be afraid to enjoy what is beautiful and to believe that the world that and to believe that as I give to the world so the world will give to me and that card <coughs> when life is going pear shaped or is uncontrollable and we feel powerless over people places and things and we feel angry and resentful that we are not able to control just anything but what our choices are it reminds me that I am part of the world and not in control of it I can work out what is the best choice to do given my life experiences right now but if I try and manipulate and control it so it comes out the way I want it to I often don't take account of everybody else so today it is about understanding where I fit where I'm included where I love people where I can be loved back and useful and if I can remind myself in the moment when I feel a resentment or anger rising in me to say to myself this is just for today how am I feeling why and what can I do 
then I can move from being assertive, how am I feeling, why and what can I do, to a place of empathy, which is asking the general question of those I'm with, how are we feeling, why and what can we do? In other words, putting myself in the shoes of other people who encounter me. And that can be very difficult, because often we are so focused on what we want rather than what we need, we do trample over the feet of others in the rush to get whatever it is we think we ought to have. And the gift for me is when I wake up in the morning, and I did it this morning, how am I feeling, why, what can I do? I'm feeling quite drained by the excitement and the fun of the last few days, and I need to take time to recharge my batteries, my internal workings, if you like, my emotional and spiritual core. And the way to do that is to gently find balance in the moment. And it sounds weird to say things like that, but to find who I am right now and what I need more than anything is to take it easy. And that is the gift of recovery, because once we start to understand the pattern of how to be included in life, where we stop trying to want life to be a certain way, and we see the real choices we have in the moment of now. So when I know what my choices are, and I need to take account of other people, all well and good, but if I decide on a course of action, or plan something without taking account of other people, then that's where the problems arise. So that Just For Today card, all about right attitude, right behaviour, for right situation. And it's not me putting myself down, and it's not me putting other people down. It's just saying I'm a part of what is going on. I'm not the controller of life. I'm not God. And these little cards, so that one which has got the AA preamble, also has the 12 steps of AA and the 12 traditions of AA inside, and the serenity prayer on the back, which is what I finish these videos with. And this Just For Day card two simple pages you can't see it too well because of the light but the just for today card these are things I carry around and I talked about the uh, 12 spiritual principles yesterday they're on a chip and it says 24 hours on the front unity service and recovery for fellowship unity around sober service keeps us included and recovery is what it's all about and then for individuals open, honest and willing to live as life is, not trying to bend it the way we want it. Because often we don't even know what we want, because it's an extreme of something, our feelings, our emotions. And I do talk about the spiritual often. It's not spiritualism, it's not religion. For me, spiritual is the, the actual connection to living living in the moment and as many Eastern philosophies say mind, body and breath in the moment of now so if my mind, my body and my breathing is in the moment of now my mind, understanding my feelings understanding what I can do feelings first, thinking follows and it can be intuitive leaps or sensing my way and in early recovery it was all about tiptoes and then f putting my feet firmly on the ground and just going with the flow of life until I realised where my choices were and those are around sobriety being able to love other people being loved back and that took a long while to understand and how to be useful our usefulness is not with our job title or career it's in the usefulness to ourselves and other people in the community and families or wherever we happen to live and what we do how we conduct ourselves. Underlying all of that for spiritual for me is truth, the truth of now. And I can only get to the truth of now with the help of others. My truth on my own is just my truth, my opinion really, my belief system. So I need it informed, so I'm not off track and I'm more in the middle of the road where life is deeper and more meaningful rather than at extremes where it's superficial and cannot be sustained enough so the serenity prayer 
to God or good conscience as you come to believe for yourself good conscience is what's up here or wherever it is connected to right actions, right behaviour given our life circumstances so when our feelings fit our experience then we know where we are it may not be a good place may not be a bad place it's just the way it is today and then the choice is inclusion how to live with and through whatever it is we need to do that simple and so much of a hardship if we don't just go with the flow so to God of good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today Hello Don in London, it's the 28th of December 2009, nearly the end of the decade, my videos all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, and my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, well, addicted to work, relationships, being perfect, never so, you name it, collecting, materialism, anything to fill that gap inside to feel good, to feel right about life and I thought I had it cracked two careers, all going well, working hard never knowing I was wearing myself down and down and down and every time I went down a little bit more I drank a little bit more because I needed to take the edge off you know, life is hard life is difficult, as M. Scott Peck said and he was, according to his obituary in the Daily Telegraph some years ago, a chain-smoking, gin-sodden philanderer. And that's how he died. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to die like that. I prefer to be sober today. So even the wisest with the wisdom don't necessarily put it into action. But what he said, life is difficult, applies to everybody. And everybody's on this path of destiny we're not on the path to destiny, we're on the path of or the road of destiny is happening now and what I've learned is when I was drinking my feelings, my emotions, my spiritual experience if you like of living in the moment was always clouded by dependence and then addiction so why do we take drugs, why do we take alcohol to take the edge off, to feel convivial, to be joyful, to be relaxed, to be able to love, be loved back and useful. And why did it have to be alcohol? Why did it have to be anything to take me into a place where I felt right? And that was because maybe I was full of fear of not being good enough, feeling less than other people, and didn't really know how to cope with life. And as one archbishop said, what is, when asked what is spiritual, he said it's the ability to cope with what's going on. So there's no secret and there's no big deal about what is spiritual. Everybody is spiritual and everybody's on a spiritual path. It's sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes full of good things and less so. So if we are able to cope with what is going on with a sober head, and that's what I prefer these days, I'm learning a little bit more about how I can be today. So, who am I? Well, I'm just learning one day at a time. I know who I am today. I'm Don, I'm in recovery. And what helps me keep in recovery? Well, family, mainly. Friends, mainly. Fellowship, definitely. And the fellowship which I am a part of is Alcoholics Anonymous. If you're in, well, if you say you're in, you're in. And that's as simple as that. And if you don't want to be in it, there are other ways to find sobriety. But uh, I like fellowship. I love fellowship because it means I'm a part of something. 
I'm included rather than excluded. And I spent a lot of time excluded from life because of my drinking. And that's a self-inflicted wound, most definitely. But the problem with addiction is we are in denial on the way to it. And the disease tells us, if it could tell us, as an entity, that we don't have it and that we can go back to self-will and willpower and control it and the answer is I've never found it so for me so self-will will run right and you know my best thinking kept me drinking and my best feelings keep me sober so thinking got me drinking kept me there self-will got me to addiction and now being powerless over alcohol knowing that knowing and accepting it it took a long time for that I understand that there are 12 steps which can help me 12 steps of action to change my behavior and my attitude on a daily basis so if things are going good I've got 12 steps to help me stay good and if things are not going good I've got 12 steps to help me understand what is happening in my life so a useful program definitely so fellowship the Fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous is where I'm at and I share the preamble or AA statement of intent here on the videos simply because it reminds me in terms of my meditations about what is important to me and it says this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any, any set, denomination, politics, organization or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that final sentence, our primary purpose is its purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety, all part of it and the 11 steps before make the 12th step work so uh, I'm an absolute fan of AA, it works for me it's full of unique authentic people and we're all on our unique authentic path not the same one, all individuals all with a path and the gift is we are learning one day at a time what makes life work and what makes us tick so the gift, the gift, the absolute gift is as we share it, we stay sober. As we give it away, we stay sober. And that's what I try to do here. So I share the daily reflections, this book mainly. And it's all about the 12 steps of AA and the 12 traditions. And it covers one step a month. And obviously, being December, it's all about the 12th step, which is sharing the message. And it says here for December 28th, suit up and show up. In AA, we aim not only for sobriety, we try again to become citizens of the world that we rejected and of the world that once rejected us. This is the ultimate demonstration towards which the 12 step work is the first but not the final step. And it goes on to say, the old line says, suit up and show up. That action is so important that I like to think of it as my motto, or we say in the UK, suit up and show up. I can choose each day to suit up and show up or not. Showing up meet at meetings starts me toward feeling a part of that feeling, for then I can do what I'll, I say I'll do at meetings. I can talk with newcomers and I can share my experience. That's, what's, that's what credibility, honesty and courtesy really are. Suiting up and showing up are the concrete actions I take in my ongoing return to normal living. And it is about returning to normal living. How else? What else would it be for? So that we can be part of family, community and society. That we can do something useful on a daily basis to make life work. And you know, Christmas time and the end of the year is all about review. And the meeting I went to last night, well, it was all full of... Some people have had a good year and hardship along the way. But they've, they've found themselves again and found themselves with a sober Christmas for the first time. Or many for many and the gift is as we go along we are open to what is happening around us rather than closed off and the other part of it is we actually start 
to develop a new outlook of openness, honesty and willingness. And, just a bit of a word of caution, although we are open, honest and willing, and we are changing our attitude and behaviour to be good citizens of this world, it doesn't mean everybody's on the same page. So we still encounter how other people are in life, and how they know us, or how we see them when we first greet, well, when we first encounter them. So the watchword is, don't ever think that everybody's thinking the same way as you, they're not or feeling the same way as you about life and living in recovery. So the gift in this is acceptance of where we are today. And the serenity prayer at any time of day can help me immensely, whether I believe in God, good conscience or anything which is to the good of living. And the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. Don in London, I December 20, 27th already, coming up to the end of the year. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, for many, many years, decades in fact. My behaviour could be equally addictive towards people, places, things, collecting, trying to be right, trying to be perfect, although I've never described my behavior is trying to be perfect. The best drinker, the best worker, the best of relationships, trying to love the right girl perfectly and of course never able to do any of those things. I could be the last man standing at a party but uh, how, how sober was I? Not that sober. And not that sober or spiritual in my outlook. So these days, one day at a time, living life as it can be lived sober learning and for well yes forever learning life is a learning situation and when we make the mistake of thinking or feeling that two situations are always going to be the same then that's a form of insanity and my attitude to my drinking was it's okay i'm still alive i'm still hard working i'm still earning i still have the career but all of those things, money and career, didn't really make me happy. And it was at the end of, uh, I suppose, climbing a very precarious mountain of a particular type of career that I realised that I was heading for more of the same, doing the same thing over and over again. And if with any luck I could get more money for it, that's the only thing that seemed to be driving me. And that's why I fell off my perch, fell off my career. So I fell into a pit of despair and a nervous breakdown and that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because there was enough time to do something about it. But I wasn't a quick learner. My recovery has been slow and steady. Sometimes two steps forwards and then five years backwards in one case. Anyway, another, more about that another day. So my videos are actually quite cheerful in the end because it is about recovery one day at a time. It is about living sober one day at a time and being in a fellowship which has helped me stay alive without which I don't know that I would be here. So I found my rock bottom where I couldn't do it on my own anymore. Willpower had failed and all my logical thinking just kept me drinking because willpower said I can do this on my own. I can get sober and stay sober. I can prove to the world that I'm a useful human being again and it wasn't working. Whatever I did, I don't know why, that's the nature of addiction. If I knew the reason behind it, the real reason behind it, if there were one, I would have stopped, wouldn't I? So thinking kept me drinking and these days uh, an emotional, spiritual and physical program of recovery works for me 
So if I know what my feelings are, if my feelings fit the experience I'm having, then I know I'm on the right track. And that doesn't mean they're good feelings, it can mean that they're quite argumentative and angry feelings and resentful feelings, but I need to know why they're there. So if I do it on a daily basis, nothing gets too big, but if I save up my anger and resentments for any length of time, then my thinking will get me back into the problem again, not necessarily of drinking, but old attitudes and old behaviour around being right being put upon, being let down and actually the only person who can do all those things I can put upon myself and let myself down by not sharing in an open honest way what's going on for me. So the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, has afforded me the luxury to find out how to be open, honest and willing to face each day as life is on life's terms, accepting what is and then seeing if I can do something about it, either on my own in an assertive way or with others with empathy. What a struggle. And I've just had two really good days, so Christmas Day and Boxing Day, seeing family and being a part of something which is extraordinary, something I never really experienced before. My feelings being right-sized in the moment over Christmas Day and Boxing Day and enjoying the experience of being with family in a way which was never about duty or it's never about duty now. It's because it's good to be in company. And it's also good to be in company and then know when to leave because we're getting overwhelmed by it all. So I was there long enough to be a part of without feeling, I suppose, overwhelmed by it all. And it seems these days I can do that almost for all the day. Whereas before, I don't know, I was never there. I was always in a sea of alcohol. So what a change. Anyway, what is AA and how does it help me? Well, first of all, I don't speak for AA, never can, never will. It's full of unique, authentic people who speak for themselves where they will. So anonymity is sacrosanct within the rooms of AA and the fellowship. But I am allowed to speak about recovery and how fellowship helps me on a personal level. That's the way I see it. And I understand it that way. Anonymity provides sanctuary to find our truth the truth of now. So people share as they will where they will and a lot just prefer to keep it within fellowship. So it may seem secretive but it's not. It's, it's actually honouring the spiritual foundation of anonymity where we share as we choose. I can say I go there but I can't say anybody else goes there. So AA, what is it? I will share the preamble here so it slows me into, into the moment of now, then share some daily reflections and something from a book called Drop the Rock and something about the spiritual principles which are involved in living with life as it is, emotional, spiritual and physical well-being. So AA, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And how we achieve sobriety or help others to achieve sobriety is often a case of our own personal experience of what has worked. But one of the things we do know about uh, trying to help another person get sober is we may be the right person or we may be the most inappropriate person. Just because we knew how to get sober does not necessarily mean that somebody can hear our message. And often it is a message in, delivered in a different way which helps. And uh, I witnessed uh, an unfortunate instant incident recently where there had been an altercation or um, an argument around how to help another person. And the result was uh, one person was saying, well, we all have our own way. And the good news about AA is we all have our own personal opinions. And that's perfectly right. And we will always try and do our best for other people. Followed by uh, yes, but... If it were me, I would have done this. 
and the desire in me is to say to myself do I want to involve myself in another person's or two other people's argument about how to help share recovery when in fact both ways are perfectly le legitimate do I want to put my all in and say hang on a minute are you sure you're arguing around, around, around the right thing here or are you just trying to assert your position that the other person was wrong and often when we are doing a step 10 which is admitting we are wrong and promptly admit it is not followed by and by the way I was right either you are admitting a wrongdoing and stepping over the mark you don't follow it by saying and by the way I was right and you ought to do it my way so easy to fall back into those traps so I had to walk away from that and the reason why I walked away was simply this none of my business how other people conduct themselves in relation to their own personal behaviour, attitudes and outlook people are on their own spiritual path which is how to live in the moment of now and I suppose that's part of the theme today about personal conduct and from this book the daily reflections here one page a day talking about the 12 steps and 12 traditions 12 steps for personal conduct 12 traditions to hold the fellowship together so 27th of December problem solving quite as important was the discovery that spiritual principles would solve all my problems as if there were anything else besides spiritual principles your spiritual for many people is mind, body and breath in the moment of now so if my mind, my body and breathing is operating reasonably well in the moment of now I have my sp best spiritual connection to reality and there's a big difference between spiritual, spiritualism and religion all, they are all part of the same thing depending on your outlook but some people uh, are very clear on their spiritual connection to reality some have a very clear spiritualism around them and some people have their own particular religious beliefs which need to be as they wish them to be not as I wish them to be in fact I have no opinion on other people's religious beliefs I'm a bit like AA in that respect it is not for me to impose my outlook or attitude or behaviour on another person so when you see these videos it's what you see is what you get take it or leave it or switch off if it's not for you that's the way it is I don't want to undermine anybody else's life or where they're headed unless they're jumping off a cliff in which case I'll try and grab them before they do anyway it goes on to say through, uh, through the recovery process described in the big book of AA I have come to realise that the same instructions that work on my alcoholism work on, much of, work on much more whenever I am angry or frustrated I consider the matter a manifestation of the main problem within me alcoholism as I walk through the steps or in my case I, I actually live them my difficulty is usually dealt with long before I reach the twelfth step suggestion and those difficulties that persist are remedied when I take an effort to carry the message to someone else but don't tell them how to do it share the message and they work out how to do it these principles do solve my problems I have not encountered an exception and I have been brought to a way of living which is satisfying and useful and you know when it said I've I have not encountered an exception and I have been brought to a way of living which is satisfying and useful is to know to what extent I can be useful to other people and um, you know there is a phrase I use to love, be loved back and useful which is pretty much what sums up living a day at a time to love, be loved back and useful in whatever enterprise or endeavour that we are engaged in and you know the daily reflections it means more each time we, we live a day or if our day is going peculiarly badly or well for that matter it can be very helpful to us and <coughs> as it's about problem solving and, and spiritual I, I reckon in my life I've been everything from atheist agnostic to believer to wanting to demonstrate to the world my superior knowledge of this that and the other when in fact I've, I've just got the knowledge I've got is not superior to anybody else's 
And one thing that fellowship taught me mostly is that we're all the same. We're the same size, we're equal to each other. Some of us have more knowledge about some things and more knowledge and wisdom about others. But, you know, all these things are complementary. And if we try and do it on our own, as I found with trying to recover from the, the malady of the ism of alcoholism into the solution of recovering alcoholic on a daily basis, that's fine. And some people suggest that they are recovered. Well, looking backwards on yesterday, I was pretty well recovered yesterday, but I start again today because it is just one day for me. And there's a coin, which uh, is this one, I don't think you can see it too well, but it's got the 12 steps on the front, which is surrounded by recovery service and unity. And then on the outside it says, practice these principles in all our affairs. And the spiritual principles are on the back of this particular one. And it says here, acceptance is the first one. That's accepting life on life's terms and where, where I am today. Surrender is accepting I'm an alcoholic as well. But surrendering, being right. Surrendering the, the rightness of my attitude and look on life or outlook on life. It, mine is just one. Faith, faith in living well, to love, be loved and useful. Open-mindedness, not being closed down that my attitude and my outlook is right. Because often it, it's, in, it's enhanced and made, made even more broad by the input of other people. Honesty, I try to be honest. I look to truth, finding the truth of now. And it's not my opinion or belief. Truth, truth is universal, as is love and wisdom. So when it came to understanding a faith or a God of my understanding or a higher power, truth, love and wisdom, yeah, it's not my truth, it's not my way of loving, and it's not my wisdom. It's the principles of truth, love and wisdom, the absolutes of those. Willingness, yes, rather than being closed down and stuck in the malady, always looking at the problem, Willingness is about solutions. Moral inventory, well, we have a step 10. What is disturbing me on a daily basis? What has worked and what has not worked? What was my part in it? Um, and am I at fault for treading on the toes of those people around me? And do I believe I'm really right? And the answer is no, not often these days. And amends, when I'm wrong, promptly admitted, definitely. Humility is forever learning for me having the ability to open my head up and say you're not right mate you, I need to keep on learning and these steps for example 12 principles and the spiritual principles are all about keep, uh, continuous learning about life and it's not about my solution it's about a solution which may be the right way forward based on what other people say persistent and that's about endeavour for me uh, not giving up whereas in the past I was so broken I'd, I had given up and I didn't know how to get myself out of the deep deep hole I'd got into and spiritual growth learning in, in the day I keep coming back to learning and then service unity service and recovery service isn't me telling you how it is service is me sharing how it is working for me today and I always say it's the many voices within fellowship that keep me sober if I listen to one voice the one that's going off in my head most of the time thinking oh my god that's not right it's not actually but there is a time and a place where you know the experience of life te tells me that I could jump in here and, and try and fix something and the answer is not to fix another person's spiritual experience it's to help them have a more full spiritual experience, if that makes sense. So I'm learning a lot on a daily basis, and uh, you know, I, I know I've become teachable again. That's the most important thing on a daily basis to be teachable. And if I upset somebody, s someone by my actions, I'm willing, more than willing, to try and make matters better if I can. Well, if I can't, I'll have to shut up and live with it. So, Drop the Rock. It's not an AA publication, but it's um, from Hazelden, who are famous for...
publishing books about recovery. And I like Drop the Rock because it's about step six and seven. Step six is about our defects of character. And uh, somebody mentioned last night they didn't like the word defects. I'm not too keen on it either. I like to call them assets and liabilities. But some of my liabilities were around fear, putting on a brave face, and an ego so brittle, if you broke it, there was nothing underneath. And that's my sort of defects of character, fear, brave facing, and ego. And my assets, or what is described as shortcomings, not enough of something, I'm short on often courage, faith and confidence or well, years back I was certainly short on courage, faith and confidence I just went along with and tried to do whatever you told me to do to lo be loved and loved back and useful but these days courage, faith and confidence means I have my own opinion and I can be assertive in some arenas when I'm on my own assertive around my attitudes and behaviour but when I'm with people I need to have empathy which is being able to ask how are we feeling about the situation, uh, why and what can we do. And on page 87, drop the rock, or 86 it starts. Many of us are like the man, the man with the house by the river. We don't recognise the help that comes our way every day. That was me in, in the malady. Trust is learning to see the help that is already available in our lives and knowing that more is being provided on a regular basis. We must learn to give fully of our efforts to not drown and let go of the results. Trust is, a t is twofold in nature, learning to trust ourselves by being true to our integrity and giving full effort and willingness and, secondly, surrendering to the process and knowing that help is available if we ask and understanding that if we don't see, help, see the help, it may be that we are unable to see it and that's often because my point of view is getting in the way not that it is unavailable and that's what was happening last night uh, if I'd stepped in and tried to help oops, I shouldn't have said last night but it was last night I tried to help two people come to an understanding of both points of view were equally valid I'd have just made it worse because they, uh, it would have been unwelcome they were so right in their own opinions and I feel like I'm saying that I'm right in my opinion but I don't know that I am Trust comes through action. By acting worthy of trust, we gain the trust of others and ourselves. By acting trustworthy, we begin to see the help available when we are out of line with our spiritual intentions and our willingness to change. So, you know, our spiritual intentions and willingness to change doesn't mean we uh, intend to tell people what their spiritual intentions ought to be or that they should be changing to our point of view. This is when we gain a true understanding of the process of the sixth and seventh steps and begin to see the lessons take hold in our lives. The only things we used to trust were the things we were addicted to, namely being right, being willful, self-driven in my case. When we began to put our trust in the program and our higher power, the destruction stopped and re recovery began. So it's moving from the problem into the, the solution. So when I put my trust in the program, which is to hear experience, strength and hope from others about how to have courage, faith and confidence to meet the day, then my shortcomings are less. So my courage, faith and confidence improves and I have a better solution type day. But if I step back into my defects where I'm looking over my shoulder and fearful, then a brave face comes on because I'm uncertain and the brittle, brittle ego where anger and resentment can step out and smack people on the head that's what happens so on any given day it can be a step six day full of resentments and anger or it could be a day step seven day improving my courage faith and confidence and what te tends to happen is you get both of those sorts of scenarios all day long every day but if we are conscious of what are our spiritual principles and we learn to live to them just gently one day at, at a time then we're back on track again in no time we're learners we're not perfect so at the end of my videos I say the serenity prayer and it's a reflection either to God your higher power simply good conscience or whatever is your outlook that's what counts something which works in your life and I've found that conscience good conscience God whatever you choose works if you work it so 
but I'm going to try and work it today. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, for me, is just for today. Don in London, hello. It's uh, December 27th, 2009, Sunday morning, and the world is starting to come back to normality, I guess. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour. Well, I could be as an alcoholic, cross addicted into work, relationships, materialism, collecting trying to fix the gap inside, trying to cover my fears, trying not to use my ego, but ego was ruling me, very brittle and underneath not very much to talk about in terms of substance. And these days I'm on a journey of finding out who I am on a daily basis. And that's good because there's plenty of room for growth. Now I've started to let go all the old prejudice about who I was and where I came from and what life I thought was about looking right I thought I had to look right be right be perfect be the best worker best person in a relationship uh, the ultimate drinker who could hold his his liquor and these days I don't need to hold any liquor I don't need to be perfect at anything I don't need to be anything but me and see what life affords what what happens today is critical and crucial to my continued spiritual growth and the reason why I use the word spiritual is simply because spiritual for me is living in the moment of now being able to understand it and choose a path which works so drinking didn't work for me in the end it had me on the floor in the gutter looking up and judging people and no way out until I made the admission to myself I could not do this on my own and fortunately for me family friends community professionals kept me alive long enough to make that admission and having got to the admission then I needed to find help and I knew about AA the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous but I didn't never ever thought it applied to me it only applied to other people because I knew better I knew I could beat this but in the end alcohol had me beaten and down and dying and uh, going to the hospital to be resuscitated is a place where I ended up and I was still full of ego and bravado covering up the fear of who I was and what I've become and that's the nature of the illness we keep on being in denial even when we know it's killing us or well, we deny it's killing us because we need it to get by to take the edge off to try and find that old feeling of conviv conviviality and it doesn't come back all we do is become a processor of alcohol so these days I'm very lucky I'm in recovery one day at a time I'm on the road of happy destiny I'm not going to destiny destiny is now I know what the final conclusion of living is but hopefully it won't be today at least I hope not so what's keeping me sober? Definitely the fellowship of AA, family, friends, society, professionals all play their part in it too and an understanding of what it is to be in recovery. So where did I get that understanding of recovery? Simply by going to a fellowship where people knew how to keep sober for one day and then some people managed it for days, weeks, months, years, decades. So I'm on that path of happy destiny sometimes unhappy actually it just depends what's going on but at least I know what's going on today so the fellowship has given me my unique authentic outlook back which is developing as time goes by and the fellowship of AA is full of unique authentic people I don't speak for them never can never will never want to 
that's the gift we all find our authenticity again and to be unique and our path is as it is so what is AA this is the statement of intent or the AA preamble shared at every meeting I go to and it reads like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's it. Help others to achieve sobriety who have a desire not to drink on a daily basis. And that's the gift. We don't make it any bigger than it need be to live in the moment of now. And it's imperfectly perfect, this moment of now. And it's ever present. So if we are able to access good choices in the moment, then at least we're on a path. And when I don't know the answer, or I need some help, I lean on fellowship, the many, the great and the good, if you like, who have got sobriety. And if it's a very personal issue, I might go to a sponsor or a friend who I trust implicitly to be able to feed back the truth of what I'm saying. And sometimes it's nonsense, and sometimes it makes common sense. But above all, AA, the fellowship, is about common sense, doing the, ne the next right thing and making it happen by taking the action rather than waiting to be fixed. So there's no fixing an AA. We all have to work hard at recovery. And if we put sober first, we've got a chance at being a part of family, community, society, and helping others keep sober. So I'm very lucky. And uh, I went to uh, my one of my favorite Saturday meetings last night, which was on and uh, at Eaton Square. It's normally a big meeting and it was quite big last night because a lot of people coming back from family events and you know the most important thing when we go to family events where there's drinking going on is to have a, an escape route, to have a reason to be there for the time when we can be involved in happy goings on and when life might be getting a bit uh, out of sobriety for other people it's often the time to go because we will be forgotten, our presence is not necessary. But I was very lucky. None of my family are like me. <laughs> I'm very lucky indeed. So they don't have the malady. And uh, I stayed and was a part of. And that's just all it need be, a part of. Not the centre of attention, not forgotten, just being a part of and included. And that is the real gift, to be included again in what's going on, whatever it is. And I shared readings from the literature of AA here, and we're coming up to the end of the year, and this is the Daily Reflections. And it covers the 12 steps of action for individuals trying to remain in recovery. And it is all about action, and 12 steps work in any one day, and it's life experience which makes them appropriate. And it talks here on the 27th of December about problem solving. Quite as important was the discovery that spiritual principles would solve all my problems. Through the recovery process described in the big book of AA, I have come to realise that the same instructions that work on my alcoholism work on much more. Whenever I am angry or frustrated, I consider the matter a manifestation of the main problem within me, alcoholism. As I walk through the steps, my difficulties usually dealt with long before I reach the twelfth suggestion or the twelfth step, and those difficulties that persist are remedied when I take, make an effort to carry the message to, to someone else. These principles do solve my problems. I have not encountered an exception, and I have been brought to a way of living which is satisfying and useful. And uh, as I often say, you know, one of the three elements of living which are important to me is to love other people other people to love me back and have something useful to do and the 12th step of the program is about sharing our usefulness so as I say at the end of these videos there is a, a prayer to acceptance whether we believe in God or we believe in a higher power or we believe in good conscience and that serenity prayer is about can do cannot do and gaining the wisdom to know the difference so whenever things are difficult 
I say to myself with the serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is, for me, and always will be, just for today.